It's a great pleasure to have all of you here today. I thought you all might begin your tour here. Hey YouTube fans, Ramey Jordan here from the Auto Diesel Channel. What we're going to do today is uh, set up a video for you to describe all the electrical work that I did in this camper and also how I installed the Dometic uh, Penguin 2 AC unit on the roof and all the electrical required for that. So we'll put all this in the one video for you and uh, if you tend to do both of these things you'll see uh, what's going to be required to go end to end on it. So here we go. We're going to use this drawing multiple times throughout the course of this video, starting with a 30 amp grid power source, how it works its way through the main uh, electrical entry to the Panatronics panel, then over to the Dometic AC unit and into the thermostat connector. Uh, we'll also take that down to the battery, how it grounds to the frame, and uh, as you can see listed on this chart is also all the parts required for the Dometic AC unit the way I've got it uh, configured. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to uh, get a camper like this started uh, if you want to hook up the power from the house is to get a 30 amp circuit uh, run over to where it might be convenient for your camper to plug into if you want to charge batteries or, or run anything in there that uh, you don't want to have to run uh, solar or whatever for. Or to just make sure that you have power to whatever devices like a refrigerator that you want to run prior to leaving on a trip. So, in my case, I had installed a uh, main 30 amp circuit with uh, my connector on here that runs obviously down off to my truck. So I've provided this drawing to show you that uh, on the right hand side is a 30 amp uh, wiring outlet. Shows you which is the ground neutral and the hot. You can also compare that to the 50 to 20 amp outlet that this shows on the left hand side. You can see in this picture that the uh, Cabco electrical extension cord will mate right up to the Moranco outlet. So as I showed you in some earlier videos, I have this uh, Moranco 30 amp easy lock uh, outlet here that I put in. And here's the other end of the Cabco uh, outlet right here. So uh, you can see it runs in from the from the garage and feeds right into this this 30 amp outlet. It takes about a uh, three inch hole, two and a half two and a half inch hole possibly to get this uh, drilled in here. So that just fits in, locks in place, and then this little tightener will secure it in position. Here again, this is about 25 feet. Um, from the house. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the electrical components that I used uh, in my van. Um, I'm also going to provide some drawings, um, some wiring drawings of the Panatronics and the, uh, some of the other things that I had. Uh, you'll see those in a little bit. So here we go. Now we're going to take a look at the types of wire and connectors we're going to use to be able to set up all this in the camper. Okay, so what I'm going to show you here is um, samples of uh, materials that I use to uh, complete my camper. Uh, starting with a 12 volt, and I want to mention something about wiring first off. What you see here is uh, three gauges of wire and one of them that you don't see. Um, first off, let's talk about marine grade wire. So this happens to be, what I have in my hand is a product called Ancor, you can see it here, Ancor marine grade products. This happens to be a, this one happens to be a 14 gauge 3 wire product, uh, and this wire is all stranded. So here it is, 3 conductor, 14 gauge. This is what you need for all your standard convenience outlets and uh, for 110 volt. You can see your part number 131510 for that if you're interested. You can order this through places like West Marine or wherever you can find this product. Um, this one happens to be 12 gauge. 
you can see 12 gauge three conductor boat cable so here again um, this stuff is uh, stranded you'll notice this is stranded the insulate there's no paper installation in this it's very flexible uh, mainly do because it's stranded and you'll see a white black and green for your grounding you'll need this for any 20 amp circuits so for any 15 amp circuits you need a 14 gauge 20 amp circuits you'll need a 12 gauge and for any 30 amp circuits you're going to need a 10 gauge so I don't have a sample of 10 gauge in here at the moment but you'll need that for your primary 30 amp circuit if you're going to put one in for 12 volt I've actually taken um, as I mentioned this is same thing Encore marine grade part 121 910 for Encore this is an 18 gauge two conductor and the reason for the I use that is for my 12 volt so here's a sample piece here you can see it comes with your standard red and black the insulation here is very easy to to cut loose uh, if you want to slice that open and then just take it off it's very easy to work with one thing I'd like to recommend you to do is to get a, a nice set of wire cutters this again happens to be an Ancor bought off of West Marine it's got a nice way to set this in here this thing will clamp down here and strip off that wire just by clipping it's very very nice and easy you can see plus it has a crimping capability right here so this will strip pretty much anything that you're going to use the outlet happens to be um, another one that I bought off of uh, Amazon this is listed as a band band C waterproof marine uh, 12 volt outlet um, if you take a good look at that and here again it's a marine marine grade outlet 12 volt I like this unit a lot because it, it has a nice um, this mountable piece here is very nice to mount and it looks nice when you get done it's got this little slot in it so when you uh, after you get that in through the hole that you're going to bury in then you can fold this over and it has a nice look to it plus this mounts well some of the others that you'll find at standard auto stores uh, are not as easy to mount and uh, like I said this one's very nice now you're going to need a, a hole saw possibly depending on where you mount this um, I believe I used an inch and a quarter here this may require um, an inch and a quarter uh, but all you really need to do is cut your hole put this into that hole um, tighten this up mount your face to it once you get this into the to the hole that you're going to tighten it up to um, put this face on it and screw it in place here and here I tended to solder on the wire that I um, put onto these 12 volt outlets. You can you can set up little clips if you want to and clip them on. You'll just have to crimp that and push them on, and that'd be great too. Uh, having to solder these, but anyway, look for this marine type with a large face on it. Uh, they're pretty nice. Other things I did, um, particularly for the wiring for the light, is to use bullet connectors. Um, the ones I put in the ceiling first of all were the female side of this bullet connector and then when I ran the power uh, so this would have been the power and then when I ready put on the light I, I wired the black wire in through this bullet connector and was just able to put it together uh, here again this is all crimp and then the other wire the white wire I would have crimped onto a spade lug like this and then screwed it into the aluminum frame to ground it so main power then was coming here uh, was main power is coming into the female the crimp this on to the light itself and then just push them together when you're ready <clears throat> and then take the white wire crimp it on here and then just screw it into the aluminum frame and you'll be fine there um, as you can see I had a couple of colors here I would have used the red and the blues 
uh, on the bus bars, uh, wherever, where, for all the bus bars. Okay, so good set of wire strippers, crimpers, uh, work great. You'll need hole saws, a nice 12 volt outlet, and some proper 18 gauge wire. That's what this is here. This is here again, marine grade, two conductor, 18 gauge, um, marine grade wire. And that's what it looks like right there. Once you start wiring up electrical for 110, uh, as I mentioned, this happens to be the, um, I'm using an example of 12 gauge, uh, only because I have these lugs on there and this is a leftover piece, but you'll want to use 14 gauge to your primary um, convenience outlets in a manner such like this. You're going to wire black into one side and bring your neutral out the other side and wire in your ground. And if you want to continue on to other outlets, obviously you can come off of here and here to continue that wire off into another outlet. So this picture shows the 10 gauge wire coming off the back side of the Renko uh, electrical entry on the outside. So as far as the 110 volt goes, I just showed you the 30 amp feed into the uh, camper itself. Uh, from that uh, entry, I've run 10 gauge wire from that entry on the outside of the cabinet, uh, the camper, into this cabinet right here. So as it comes in, it's going to feed into this primary breaker. Now you can do all sorts of things with breakers, but here again, um, I went with a marine grade set of products, and and um, you'll see these Panatronics panels. Uh, used in a lot of marine type of uh, uh, situations, boats and that sort of stuff. There's several other YouTubes out there that you can see of people that have used these. And I think they're very nice. That's where I got my idea for using them. In my case, I just went with a, a three position because I didn't feel like I was going to need any more than an air conditioner, convenience outlet, and water heater. And these labels, uh, you can have them defined uh, whatever you want so you can get these labels with this panel when you order it so keep that in mind if you want to order something like this uh, as I said it comes all pre-assembled with the breakers in it switches and all you have to do is cut a hole and mount it uh, obviously you want to wire it up before you get it into that hole um, you have to run your wire out of the hole wire it up and then put it back in place but uh, it's very convenient because it has um, other things like polarity checks on it and other things that can help you from um, making mistakes with putting together a panel like this. So let's take a look at it a little bit more from the inside. So what we want to look for here is this bar, the second bar back, and then the main set of breakers is the black stuff that you see right here. Um, this happens to be the ground bar. The neutral bar is this bar right here, second bar. And then this side uh, of the breakers is where you hook up your main, main power on this side. And then on the other side of the breakers is where you hook up your items that you want to power. So uh, you'll see here that uh, and I'll give you a diagram, but in this this wire right here is my main um, 30 amp feed into this power panel uh, here. And um, black wire is going in right next to it right here. Uh, this happens to be the 12 volt signaling for the illumination right here. And majority of these wires all these wires here this is the ground coming in from the 30 amp feed and then all the rest of this stuff is um, my cabling this stuff down here is my cabling going out so this one's going to the air conditioner here again this is a 12 gauge wire that works its way up above the ceiling and to the air conditioner um, and then 14 gauge coming out of here then is also going to these 110s so here again uh, this 
this air conditioner breaker happens to be a 20 amp breaker. Uh, this convenient outlets ones were are 15 amp breakers and the water heater is a 15 amp breaker. We'll talk about the installation of the air conditioner separately, but uh, as you can see here, it, it requires a couple, there's four wires that come down from the air conditioner that are uh, 12 volt related. And then the main power, 110 is coming into the, this wire here, which is again, a 12 gauge because it's a 20 amp circuit. Okay. So now we're going to take a look at the Paletronics panel that's uh, with all the electrical breakers in it. You can see by this picture here that the neutral is in the middle bar, the ground bar is on the left side. Here's a drawing that shows the detail behind the 30 amp electrical connection on the top and the feature of the AC. This is the electrical cabinet I set up that you're going to cut holes in to mount the panel if you do something similar. Here's a picture of the back side of the panel tracks. It's all wired up. You can see that blue and black wire is the illumination uh, 12 volt that goes to the front side of this panel. So as far as installing this air conditioner from an electrical standpoint, I mentioned earlier that you've got to have a 20 amp circuit feeding into this unit and you also have to have uh, 12 volt wiring if you're going to run a thermostat that's separate from this AC unit. In my case I chose to do that I have a separate thermostat you can actually buy this unit with this cowling unit uh, that's got a thermostat that's mounted right here and so you can adjust the temperature through this cowling if you want to do it that way I chose to have a remote sensor thermostat uh, and thus I had to extend the wiring out of here into my wiring cabinet to be able to do that uh, there's a little gray box that fits up inside here that you have to wire up your main electrical and then you have to plug in your thermostat wiring and then extend it to wherever you want to go uh, and that's primarily it it's, it's not that difficult uh, you do have to be a little careful with the 12 volt wiring and, it's, and getting it connected to the thermostat the right way but i have wiring diagrams so that i can show you how i did that and how the instructions show to do it uh, to be successful so in this picture here you can see the, the Dometic AC parts that I had to purchase for the Dometic Penguin I have installed. In this picture now we're going to show how to hook up the Dometic Penguin to the roof. Uh, starting in the next picture you're going to see a 14 and a half inch hole that's cut into the roof. I used a uh, circular saw with a metal cutting blade from underneath to do that. This picture is raising the Dometic unit from the bed of a Ford 150 onto the top of the truck. And this is the Dometic that's sitting on the roof as it is. You got to be careful not to damage the foam uh, portion of the bottom side of that unit as you put it on there so it can fit snugly. And then in this picture you see this is the electrical connection for the power to the from the unit to the control box that you're going to see in the next picture. This is the control box that's mounted onto the, the wiring, the frame that's underneath uh, the unit. Now with this picture we're going to take a look at the thermostat uh, and the control box more closely. So here's the control box with the electrical connection on the side. This next picture is the, you'll see the wiring that you're going to connect to, the, the green, black, and white wires uh, that you're going to now connect your main electrical feed to, which is what I'm doing here through this little entry on the back side of the uh, control box. Uh, this is how it looks after you get it all put together. Then here's the way it looks when it's all mounted onto the frame. This is inside the, um, the unit as it's mounted. So you can see that electrical connection again on the right hand side. I'm getting ready to plug in. Then on the right hand side is the feed over to the um, panel-tronics. So with this picture again, you're going to take a look at uh, how the thermostat sets up. This is the wire for that. You can see there's four leads. Uh, it's shown in the drawing how to hook all that up. It's going to connect and snap right in, right next to where that feed comes over for the main electrical power. And you're going to wire it down into these three screw terminals on the top left-hand side. The top one on the left uh, requires two wires coming out, uh, as shown in the drawing. And so this is how it looks when you get it mounted. 
this is a uh, the separator that goes in there. In my case, you have a minimum of two inches. You can use this is what it looks like when you put it in place right before you screw in all these bolts. So this is what it looks like from underneath when you got it all put together. The electrical wiring going over to the main breaker on the right. And then when you get the cowling installed and screwed in place, this is what it looked like for a finished product. As I mentioned in an earlier video, the 12 volt system here is primary to power several things. Uh, number one is lighting. Secondly is the thermostat. Thirdly is the lighting on this panel down here, the panel products panel. Uh, and uh, spare outlets that it might have, one of which is used for the 12 volt power for the refrigerator freezer. Okay, so as a starter, we want to take a look at the uh, 12 volt connection. As I mentioned before, and you'll see in these pictures, I have an absorbed glass mat battery. It's called an AGM battery. It's maintenance free, it's uh, capable of being tilted in many directions and won't leak like some other lead acid type batteries so you might want to consider those I have a deep cell one of the things I wanted to point out is a 12 volt bus bar and grounding your battery to your frame so that's be very important to do that so you can uh, take advantage of that when you uh, install your lighting in the roof and that sort of thing if you have a metal frame that extends all the way up into the roof so this is what that's going to look like as you can see um, this happens to be in my 12 volt uh, bus bar right up in here that's come directly off the battery and then right in here I've grounded that um, return side the non power side to the frame so that once you install some once you install some power here you'll be running this red wire to wherever that location is and then when you ground it to the frame it'll come back and route back into the battery from uh, this bus bar after you grounded it to the frame. One thing I want to mention in this drawing is the need to ground the battery to the frame. That way when you put in the lighting as I mentioned in the next video that you won't have to run two wires to do that. Having just shown you the battery, uh, one of the leads from that battery comes up into this cabinet here and powers this bus bar that I then use to power these other devices. So the bus bar is something you can buy at typically any automotive store. I happen to order these off of Amazon, so you can see these on Amazon if you if you look for that sort of thing. These bus bars are a, I think a 12, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11, 11 position uh, bus bars with a main feed right here. Uh, and then multiple... Um, connector points as you can see I've used several of them um, and then this these two then are fed back down to the battery and then you can see this 12 volt bus bar then powers this switch which is to a light wiring that goes into the thermostat here and then there's some uh, other wiring that um, for 12 volt that that illuminates this panel, this panel product panel. These labels right here are um, illuminated from behind um, with that 12 volt power. I'm going to show you this connector later, but this is one of my favorite connectors, this 12 volt connector, um, mainly because of the mount that it comes with and how secure it can be when you actually put it in the cabinet. You can see here, once you put it through that hole that you're going to have to drill. In my case, I soldered these wires on here and then put a little bit of electrical tape on it. And then ran it up into the bus bar. Let's talk about lighting for a little bit. This truck actually came with two light switches already installed with four lights that were um, mounted in the ceiling. I took those out and replaced them with the ones that you see here. switches that I had available to me are, are this switch right here. I rewired it because it was running off the main battery. I wanted to run it off the new battery that I showed you earlier. So you have to take a look at that. If you have that sort of thing already then you're going to want to disconnect it from your main battery and then reconnect it to the battery you're going to supply. In my case I had to um, uh, find the routing of all that wiring cut it loose and then rewire it back to the 
the battery that I supplied. So as far as the lighting, as I mentioned, that switch I just showed you powers all the lights in this cabinet. Um, and all of them are switchable individually. But probably one thing you need to know is that you only need to run one power wire to these lights. And then as long as you've grounded your battery to the frame, then your ground wire you can screw right into the aluminum uh, roofing or whatever you have available, the framing, and it'll ground the light and then you'll get uh, operatable light uh, from that standpoint. So that's what I've done. You'll have a, a black wire and a white wire here. So if you'll run your power to the black wire and then just ground your white wire uh, into your ceiling frame, then you'll uh, be able to operate that way and you won't have to run two wires up and back. So finally you can see the battery I've got here that's connected to the Minn Kota, uh, the 12 volt bus bar, the 110 outlet, and then all the wiring that's running through the frame over to the outlet on the right hand side and back to the main light power switch. This is a stubbed out light, uh, as I said I'm carrying the power to this connector and then away again to the next light. Hey there YouTube fans, well there you go, the details of my electrical and uh, Dometic Penguin AC unit installations. Hope you can use some of those details. If you have any questions, just send me a message on the video or send me an email at the address listed at the back of this video. I wish you uh, great success in all your do-it-yourself endeavors. Please work safely and we'll see you on the road.